Hi, this is Mike Russos from the .NET Customer Success Team. I'm going to talk a little bit today about ASP.NET Core middleware. So, in ASP.NET Core, when an HTTP request comes in, the way it's processed is by routing it through a series of software components known as middleware. Each one is called, in turn, in the order they were registered, and has an opportunity to act on the request. Uh, it ha can uh, write a response, if this middleware processes the, the request and knows what to do with it, and then return, not calling subsequent steps, or the middleware can take some action and then call uh, a next delegate to call the next piece of middleware in the pipeline. And this goes on until the final piece of middleware is called or until one short circuits by not calling next. And then uh, the response travels back out uh, in through the middleware components in the reverse order so that components have an opportunity to, you know, log that uh, the request was was served or to to take some other action. Now, at this point, on the way back out, the response has probably already been written, so you typically don't want to write to the response here, but um, you could take some other sorts of actions. So I'll, I'll walk through a little bit what it looks like to use middleware in ASP.NET Core. So here's just a simple sample application, and I'm in the startup.cs configure method. Here's configure. And the first thing to notice is that we have a lot of common calls like use static files, use MVC, use Swagger. These are all actually calls to register middleware. They're just extension methods that wrap the more common use and use middleware APIs. But when any time you call like app.use something, you're registering a middleware component. So when a request comes in, at some point in the in the middleware pipeline, we're going to get to the MVC middleware, which will route it to controllers according to MVC rules. We also have some Swagger and Swagger UI components, which um, are using the swashbuckle third-party library to serve uh, swagger.json uh, results or to create a useful swagger UI um, interface depending if um, a request comes in for those routes. Uh, you have things like use static files which you want to put before use MVC because it can just return static files from your application without having to go through the, the routing or other more expensive middleware that might follow it. But you also can register your own custom middleware, which can be useful. And there's a couple of ways to do that. The first is app.use, app.run, or app.map. App here is an iApplication Builder. When you call iApplicationBuilder.use, which is the most common scenario, you register a callback that, in, in this delegate, it's an async delegate that takes an HTTP context and a next um, uh, function. And this then defines what happens when the middleware is called. So you, you, you take some actions, you then await next to call the next, uh, p next piece of middleware in the HTTP request processing pipeline, and after that returns, now the response has presumably been produced and written, and so you can do other things afterwards. So here's just a very trivial uh, timing middleware, so that when a request comes in, we start a stopwatch, we call whatever subsequent middleware needs to run, and then once it's all done, we stop the stopwatch and we use um, a law, an I logger to log that the request um, was served in some number of milliseconds. Now, this particular middleware isn't even needed because ASP.NET Core automatically logs timings anyhow, but it's just a sample of a sort of very simple inline middleware with app.use. Now, you also have app.run. I mentioned iApplicationBuilder.run is 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 very similar, except that it only it it doesn't have a take a next function because with run it's expected that you will end the pipeline and write a response, and you don't need to call subsequent middleware. There's also app dot iApplicationBuilder.map, which uh, looks very similar, except it takes a path string because when you call map, it's sort of like conditional middleware, which is only used when the request path meets certain criteria. So if the user makes a request to one particular path, then we might use that middleware. And if they make a request to a different path, we, we don't use that middleware. 
uh, most common one you're going to see is use. Now the other way that you, you might register custom middleware, if it's a little bit more complex, is to create a middleware component, which is a type that is registered using the app.useMiddleware API. So with this API, you specify the middleware type in your call to, to use middleware, and then it will be inserted into the uh, HTTP request processing pipeline. So let's take a look at what one of these types looks like. Th there's two important methods which you have to include in a middleware component. First, you need a constructor which takes the next delegate. And so this is going to be what you call after for, for, for the middleware component which comes after this one in the pipeline. So this constructor will be called when the application starts up. You store that, that request delegate, and then later on, when your middleware is executing and it needs to call the next piece of the pipeline, you invoke next. The other important method which you have is invoke. Invoke takes an HTTP context and is what's actually called when a request gets to your piece of middleware while during processing. So when the previous middleware calls next, what's it, what it's invoking is this um, invoke delegate or in this, this invoke method. So in here you actually act on the request. So you take that context, you have a context.request to see the request, you have context.response to see the response, and you do whatever you need to do. Now within invoke you either are going to call next.invoke if you need to call the subsequent middleware, or you're going to write to the header. So you can call context.response.write async or send file async, and then you won't call next because at this point the response has been written and you terminate the middleware pipeline. You're going to do one or the other, not both. So in this very simple example, I've created a correlation middleware. So the idea being in some microservice application, there may be scenarios where the different services will call each other and we want to be able to trace activity flow between microservices. So for that we're going to have this uh, header x correlation ID which is just going to be set to some unique string and if a request comes in that has a correlation header already we're going to propagate that into the response so that the caller gets that response back. But if they if there is no correlation ID in the request, we're going to generate one and put that in the response. So that then, um, if the caller needs to call another API, or if within subsequent middleware processing in this application, in this service, we need to call another, uh, make another HTTP request, we can look in the um, headers to get the correlation ID and pass it along. We also will create a logging scope with the correlation ID before we call next.invoke so that subsequent pieces of the middleware pipeline can then log the correlation ID very easily because it will be available as a scope. And so this is just a way of saying, you know, hey, if we've got multiple microservices, they call each other, they can all have a single correlation ID for a, a given logical operation. Now, you may notice I also have the iLogger here so that I can call logger.beginscope. You can request, um, and actually I should change this to make this optional in case someone doesn't have an iLogger available, but for now I'm assuming that there is one. This will be provided by dependency injection, and you can actually have extra arguments in either the constructor or the invoke method which will be populated from the ASP.NET Core dependency injection container. So we don't need to worry about the, where the logger comes from. The ASP.NET Core app will provide this for us. We could also have put it here. That would work just as well. The difference being that this is invoked once at application startup. So you're going to get effectively a singleton lifetime where you have one of whatever uh, service you're requesting, and that's going to be used throughout the, serv uh, throughout the lifetime of the application. Whereas here, this item will this this service will be requested from the dependency injection container every time invoke is called so on a per request basis so i put it here um just because it more matches the way that we generate loggers for uh some other components but in this case you really could put it either place um but then you know in here you know the logic's not the interesting part but we we check to see if there is a correlation id header if there's not, we, we just create a new GUID and say, okay, this is now the header that we're using. Then we grab that header. We um, 
put it in the response so that the caller knows which uh, correlation ID to use if they want to. And with it being in the request and response headers now, subsequent middleware can also use it. And we, like I said, um, begin a logging scope so that it's available to the logger. And then we just call the next piece of middleware, which, you know, depending on how the caller is using this this component that might be you know an MVC middleware or it might be serving static files or something else now there is also I should point out I've created an extension method because typically you don't see people call that use middleware directly because it's customary to have a, a helper extension method that just makes that call a little bit easier so you know here I call use middleware just to demonstrate how it's done but I also have this extension method called use request correlation which I put in the SPNet core builder namespace so that it can be called by anyone using iApplication Builder and it is a an extension method on iApplication Builder so someone could you know instead of doing this they could do use uh, what did we call it request correlation and this this call now looks a lot more like the use MVC or use swagger calls which you're more used to seeing for registering middleware but that's uh, kind of the, the highlights of how middleware works in ASP.NET Core. It gives you a lot of control over how HTTP requests are processed. You, you can jump right into that pipeline and modify requests coming in. You can serve the requests and stop the, you know, cut the pipeline short if you have some sort of caching mechanism or some sort of custom way of serving an endpoint. Um, and you, know, you can then see the response on its way back out. Now, I, one thing that I should mention before I wrap up is that the order here, of, of course, is very important because these components are going to be called in the order that they're registered. So in this example, my timing middleware is, is going to be called first. So a request comes in, it will be sent to this, to this callback. When this calls next, it's going to go to this request localization thing, which is just going to set the culture that the, that the user wants from there. We're going to call the use static files middleware, so we'll, we'll serve static files if that's appropriate. If not, we'll call the next one, which is our request correlation middle. So actually here, we're not going to be assigning a correlation ID to static files. Um, you know, if you wanted to, you could just swap the order of these. That's why order matters here. It determines which middleware runs before others. Um, but then we have our, our custom middleware, then we uh, do MVC routing, and then we have the Swagger endpoints for the Swagger.json and Swagger UI. So I hope this has been a helpful overview of ASP.NET Core middleware. Uh, at the beginning, you saw a quick look at the official documentation up on docs.asp.net, which um, is also pretty thorough and can give a lot more details than I have in this video.